Now it is easier to understand the function of the armor-plated skin of the rhinoceros. You can eat in peace if you have that kind of protection from possible attackers. But our unicorns have a taste for the high grasses of the banks of the swamp, and both in Gasiranga and here in Chituan, these grasses are also a valuable resource for the human populations living around the edge of the park. Since 1973, when it was declared a national park due to the fact it was the only place in Nepal where rhinoceroses remained, a number of human settlements have been moved. The people transferred to more fertile places without wild herbivores. However, 310 villages have not been able to be relocated and they remain in direct contact with the park. When the season arrives, the local inhabitants cross the river and enter the reserves, armed with their recently sharpened sickles. Here they find what they're looking for. The natives have a legal concession to harvest the high grasses each year. Around 60,000 people gather almost 11,000 tons during harvest time, which lasts for 15 days or so. The bushels accumulate, reaching a market value of some $450,000. After taking off the costs of permits and labor, the net contribution to the local economy is around $250,000. As well as the income from sales to the paper industry, the grasses are also a basic construction material for these people. They are also used to feed the domestic cattle, which cannot stray far in search of pasture, for fear of being attacked by tigers. The heavy monsoon rains make constant repairs to the roofs necessary. This is also done with dried grass. Wherever in the world there are people living in a subsistence economy, we only need to see what the roofs are made of to know what is the most accessible, cheap local material. Underground water, clean and healthy, is fortunately abundant. And from this and the soil, the women make adobe, which of course also includes grass among its ingredients. But not all land uses are as uncontroversial as the harvesting of elephant grass. Wheat and cotton fields are slowly replacing stretches of jungle. Here, man is constantly present, carrying out the different tasks in the course of the year. And this creates problems with the local wildlife. These towers, called machams, are watchtowers from which to spot wild animals. There is always a lookout on duty, ready to raise the alarm whenever a tiger or a rhinoceros enters the fields, posing a threat to the workers' lives. In reality, all the animals are doing is returning to places that were always theirs, but which little by little have been stolen from them by man, who knows how to turn to his advantage the greatest enemy of the jungle. But the rainforests of Asia are almost as old as fire itself. They have tremendous powers of regeneration, the ancient strength of vegetation. 
Certain species are invulnerable to fire. They do not burn, they simply resist. The Semul trees are fireproof and they are therefore the final refuge in the jungle. Chitwan means the heart of the jungle. And once more in this part of the world, legend and reality go hand in hand.